Hey everybody, we've got a really interesting video for you today because today we are talking about a topic that not a lot of folks report on, at least on YouTube, but it's a very important topic. What are we talking about, Case? These are the IIHS top safety picks, the first round of them for 2023, and for this year, the tests have gotten significantly harder than last. Well, he went a little further than I was hoping, but we're talking about vehicle safety. Not necessarily the sexiest of topics, but a very important decision when it comes to buying a new vehicle. And um, one of the leaders in vehicle safety is the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. They do rigorous testing of uh, new cars on the market and they award new cars um, top safety pick and top safety pick plus based on a number of criteria. Um, and then as a consumer, you can go into purchasing these vehicles knowing that uh, they were thoroughly tested and have been um, you know, deemed safe by a by a really smart group of individuals. Yeah, that's all those awesome videos that you see online of cars crashing into and being crashed into uh, by big weighted blocks and rollers and things like that. Oh, 100%, exactly right. And all of this information is coming to us from IIHS Dot org. And if you want a more kind of succinct version, check out tflcar.com where our producer Zach did a great job of actually combining all of the vehicles in one succinct format. But here is the big thing that you need to know. Uh, this year's um, top safety pick ratings have gotten much more difficult. So compared to 101 vehicles that won top safety pick awards last year, uh, only 48 managed it this year. And then last year there was also top safety pick plus that was 65. This year it was right around 28. So they made it harder. And what was one of the primary things they did case? Well, there are new requirements uh, and some of the tests have just gotten harder, like the side impact test. The cart used to be about 3,300 pounds and it would roll at 31 miles per hour. Now it's over 4,000 pounds, about 4,200, and it rolls at 37 miles per hour. But there are also new requirements, especially when it comes to nighttime safety. Exactly right. One more note on that side impact cart. The reason they made it heavier is because of the popularity of SUVs and large trucks on the road. They want it to better simulate a side impact. Uh, but we also see new requirements on nighttime performance, <clears throat> such as nighttime frontal crash prevention. So uh, for previous years, of course, the car had to be able to um, successfully avoid an obstacle using crash prevention technology in the daytime, but now it has to do so at night as well. And headlights are also important too. Um, the organization contends it's already pushed several inferior headlight options off the market, um, and an improvement in headlight performance has led to a 15 to 90% reduction in single vehicle crashes at night, according to IIHS. Um, but yeah, headlight is still an important requirement. And what they're really pushing for is in the past, you could get a, a, a safety pick award if your headlights worked in like the top trim, but maybe if they didn't work very well in the bottom trim. But now they're pushing, hey, your headlight has to be good across the trim level, so even the base model still has to have good lights. Which is smart because there are a lot of base model vehicles, especially in the pickup truck segment, that have really poor base headlights. Yes, exactly right. Well, let's talk about some of the big winners this year. Um, and I have the article here in front of me, but uh, one of the largest manufacturers in the world also happens to have the most 2023 awards in their belt. So that's the Toyota Motor Corp, which is Toyota and Lexus. They have nine top safety pick plus awards and six top safety pick awards for a total of 15. Yeah, and then following them up is Honda and Acura. They got a total of six which is also pretty good. Yep, so six top safety pick plus and two soft soft top safety pick, excuse me, and then Mazda earned six top safety pick awards. However, they were booted off the plus spectrum altogether because of their nighttime performance with crash prevention. But anyways, let's kind of dive into some of the vehicle winners. And we're gonna start out with the top safety pick. So not quite the highest um, possible award, but still very good. The IHS breaks it down into small cars, midsize, midsize luxury, small SUVs, midsize SUVs, and midsize luxury SUVs. Now in terms of small cars, you have the Honda Civic, the Mazda 3, and the the Toyota Corolla, and for all three of those, that includes both the sedan 
and the hatchback model. Except, and it's worth noting, um, they have an asterisk, Honda Civic hatchback except Type R performance variant. Yeah, which is interesting. Yeah, so the Type R does not obtain that new award. But all of these are huge sellers, the Civic, the Corolla, and the Mazda 3, um, all made the uh, Top Safety Pick Award, which is fantastic to see. They all have a lot of great safety technology standard, and I'm glad to see them on the list. Yeah. So for midsize cars, the Hyundai Sonata, the Subaru Legacy, made the list, but only the Sonatas built after December of 2022. Yeah. So there are some asterisks, right? The manufacturers changed some things a little bit, and um, uh, that's why you'll see differences in in uh, uh, in years and, and why that changes. What about midsize luxury cars? Just one. It's the Lexus ES350, but. For small SUVs, there are a lot on this list. Yeah, so we have a lot of um, contenders from Mazda here, the CX-30, the CX-5, and the CX-50, all fantastic cars, all great to drive, all made the, the top safety pick list. The Nissan Rogue also made the list, along with the Toyota, uh, sorry, the Subaru Forester, the Toyota RAV4, and the RAV4 Prime, and yeah. the Venza. Yeah. Now, Toyota, of course, has really been pushing their um, included safety tech right um, the, the Toyota uh, safety system is one of the best in the industry, and it comes standard on all their models, so it's great to see some of these vehicles um, make these lists. And then for midsize SUVs, what do we got? The Ford Explorer and the Mazda CX-9, and then for a midsize luxury SUV, the Lincoln Nautilus. Exactly right. Now let's step up to the Safety Pick Plus. So these are some of the safest cars on the road based on um, the driver and the passenger small overlap front test and the original moderate overlap front test, um, a good rating in the updated side test, uh, acceptable or good headlights as standard, advanced or superior rating for daytime vehicle to pedestrian front crash prevention, and advanced or superior rating for nighttime vehicle to pedestrian front crash prevention. And they actually eliminated two things off of the 2023 requirements. So they got rid of the roof strength test and they also got rid of the head restraints, head restraint test. Why is that, Keith? Yeah, because the industry has made it so far that those tests aren't really necessary because industry-wide, it's considered to be pretty good all around. But it's also worth noting, um, you got to, that is not what I'm looking for. Um, the, the new side impact test looks to be pretty darn challenging. Yeah. So let's check out the, the Jeep Wrangler, for example, right? It didn't make any of the safety pick lists, but for example, we can see in the original side test, it was rated good. In the updated test, it was only rated marginal. So it actually decreased the score based on the, the, new, uh, the new test procedure. So as we jump up to the safety pick plus, small cars, what do we got? The Acura Integra, which makes sense given its relation to the Civic, that's also on the list, but this is a top safety pick plus. Yep, brand new car. Mid-size cars, the Genesis G90, the Subaru Outback, and the Toyota Camry built after January of 2023. Yeah, for small SUVs, you have the Honda CRV, the Honda HRV, Lexus UX, and the Subaru Solterra built after October 2022. Yep, and then in the mid-size SUVs, including luxury variants, the Acura MDX, the Acura RDX, the Infiniti QX60, the Lexus NX, including the NX 450H plug-in hybrid, the Hyundai Palisade and the Kia Telluride, two sister cars, the Nissan Pathfinder, the Subaru Ascent, the Tesla Model Y, the Toyota Highlander, the Volkswagen ID4, and the Volvo XC90. Yeah, including the recharged plug-in hybrid. And, and what then, about minivans? For minivans, you've got the Honda Odyssey and the Toyota Sienna, and there's also two trucks that yeah. made the list, but only two. What are those trucks, Case? It's the Toyota Tundra and the Rivian R1T. Yeah, that's very interesting to me, right? Because um, trucks are some of the most uh, popular vehicles on the market. Yeah. And we'd really like to see more of those vehicles make the list. Now, if you go to 2022, here on the website, actually, on the IHS website, you can see the 2022 winners. We see kind of a variety of the full-size trucks make the list. So I'm going to scroll down here. So the Rivian made it and the Tundra, but the... Uh, uh, F-150 and the Ram 1500 did as well, not the Silverado. Now, part of the reason we're not seeing a full comprehensive list of the potential trucks that would make the list is because of um, the fact that it's early, right? Yeah. Not every single vehicle has been published yet or perhaps even tested. So as the year rolls on, I'm hoping we're going to see more vehicles added to the list. For example, we only see one Tesla Model Y. Yeah. But I'm curious if maybe they have yet to publish the results on like the Model 3. One thing which is interesting is like in the F-150, right, the 2022 model year, the headlights, the base trim, poor, 
right? Yeah. So in order to make this list for the 2023, they'd have to upgrade the base headlights to at least um, acceptable or good, right? In order for it to, to be a, a safety pick plus there. So I'm going to be curious to see whether or not they actually do that. Yeah. And that's potentially good for the consumer. You can buy base model truck and it has at least functional headlights because you could definitely make an argument that those base headlights on a lot of the trucks especially are... Mm, almost borderline not functional. <laughs> I agree. Now let's kind of scroll down here. I want to go back to the 2023 um, awards. And um, I'm curious, do they have any mid-sized trucks on the market? No, just the large pickup trucks. If we go back to the previous year, 2022 winners, let's see if we have any mid-sized trucks, um, small pickups. And then only the uh, Santa Cruz made it last year on the list. Yeah, it is interesting. I think truck safety is a category that definitely needs to be explored more. For example, like an HD truck, F250, Ram 2500, and above, Chevy 2500, and above. These vehicles are in a gross vehicle weight rating where the government has decided they don't need to be rated by, um, you know, an HTSA IHS. However, um, these are vehicles, you know, that maybe at one time were intended to be used as construction vehicles. and as, yeah. But nowadays... Every half the people in Colorado, it seems like, are driving a 2500 or an F-250 to and from the school. I do. Exactly. So I really think there needs to be a big push to making those manufacturers accountable toward vehicle safety in that category. Yeah. I mean, just because a vehicle is large doesn't mean it's safe. So it would right. be good to have those kind of ratings and just have that data, have that information on those larger trucks. And because those larger trucks aren't rated, um, I mean, the manufacturer is kind of up to their own will on what kind of safety technology they put in there in terms of airbags, in terms of crash prevention, in terms of um, that kind of technology. So I'd really like to see more involvement with these organizations into looking toward uh, truck safety because it's very important. Yeah, it's definitely important. Well, guys, we'll let you know as this list keeps um, updating itself uh, as to what vehicles are going to make the 2023 top safety picks. And you can find all that information over at tflcar.com and tfltruck.com. Come. Huh.